All right. What happened to my chair? All right, whatever. Okay. All right. Today's lesson is going to be. Okay. Today's lesson is going to be from the book of Proverbs. So uncomfortable. I don't know why people mess with my chair. Ugh. I hate these stupid chairs. Sick of it. Be like, today's lesson is on self control. Today, we're going to talk about self control. So, as you can see, I was lacking some self control in dealing with an uncomfortable chair. Even though, if I'm going to be honest, those chairs are extremely uncomfortable. Are you not glad? that we replaced those stinky plastic chairs and actually got some nice chairs in teen church. So anyways, I asked Brother Moses to help me out and do this, but he forgot to tell Pastor George <laughs> that we were going to be yelling and screaming inside the auditorium. So Pastor George comes up and his face was just like, what is going on? He thought somebody broke in, was breaking stuff in the church. <laughs> Man, I wish I had it on camera. It was great. But today we're gonna to talk about self-control. I wanna start in the book of Proverbs chapter 25. In Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28, it says that a man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. So the teaching of that verse is that self-control is a defense for us in this thing called life. That there are things in life that are trying to attack us. We already know that we're in a spiritual battle. The devil's trying to attack us. We also know that as you go through life, not everything works out perfectly for you. We're going to have circumstances. We're going to have people sometimes that are going to come and it's going to hurt us. So possessing self-control, self-discipline is vital because we're always going to face these attacks and we need to decide what we're going to do when we're attacked. People who lack self-discipline don't have that defense, and they're always susceptible to the attacks of the devil. If you lack any kind of self-discipline, it's easy for the devil to get you to trip up and fall into temptation. You're an easy target. This is something that we need to develop in our life, this concept of self-discipline. Now, self-control is something that as you mature in Christianity is going to become more and more part of your life. The Bible says this in Galatians chapter 5, talking about the fruits of the Spirit. It says in verse 22 and 23, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such... There is no law. God is trying to develop several things in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And one of those things is self-discipline. It's something that you're going to have to learn. It doesn't always come natural to us. When we're babies, like my daughter, Lila, and she just wants to do what she wants to do. She does not wake up and say, I'm going to be a self-disciplined toddler today. It just doesn't happen like that. Last night, she woke up at about 10.30 and got me out of bed to let me know that she wanted to watch Sophia the First. <sighs> so I had to say, baby girl, we're not watching Sophia the First at 10.30 at night. You need to go night-night. And she's like, no, Sophia. She just wants to do what she wants to do when she wants to do it. She wants to eat when she wants to eat. But because she's young and she's a baby, I don't judge her too harshly for it. She can't act like that when she's 10, 12, 15 years old. I hope that she has some degree of self-discipline and self-moderation at that point. As Christians, our struggle is that we have the spirit inside of us has been made alive. So now we have a part of us that wants to do the right thing. But we also have a part of us that wants to do the wrong thing. The Bible talks about the new creature and the old man, and they fight against each other. And that's us. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 7, verse 18. And again, this is the Apostle Paul writing, 
who was one of the greatest New Testament Christians. And he says this, For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Man, that's tough. So even Apostle Paul says, I struggle. I want to do the right thing, but I don't always do it. Sometimes I don't want to do the wrong thing, but the flesh is like, hey, man, and I end up doing things I regret doing. It's tough. We're in a spiritual battle, and the battle is inside of us. And so as we mature in Christ, we hope to learn more self-control, self-discipline, so we can do the right things when we're supposed to, and we can not do the wrong things. We'll have the ability to resist. Let me just give you a couple of statements, and hopefully they'll help you out. First, I want to say this. You cannot always decide how you feel, but you can decide how you act. Things are going to go wrong in your life. I hate to, some of you have already figured this out. You've lived long enough to realize that you don't get everything you want for Christmas. Things are not perfect in this world and they don't work out perfectly for any of us. Unfortunately, people are going to get on your nerves. So my sister is, um, I believe she is 30. Hold up, let me find out. Let's see if she'll answer. Hello? Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, how, old did hey. You, how old did you just turn? 38. Okay, I'm, record, I'm recording a video. Just hold on. Let me finish this line and then I'll finish my conversation with you. So okay. my sister just turned 38 years old. And again, like I said, sometimes people in your life get on your nerves. Even at 38, she still gets on my nerves. I just wanted to add that just to get on your nerves. <laughs> That's messed up, right? That's so messed up. Yep, yep. That is messed up. All right, let me call you back. I love you. Bye. Okay. <laughs> so, no, seriously, though, people in your life are going to frustrate you. That's a part of life. And you can't control that people are not going to annoy you. Stop people from saying things that anger you or even hurt you deeply. You're gonna have situations in your life that are just gonna go bad. And it's gonna cause a lot of stress for you and it might cause some angerness and some hurt and pain. You're gonna to try to do some good things in your life and you're gonna fail. And that's gonna to be tough to deal with because failure is always tough to deal with. So you're gonna have all of these negative circumstances that are gonna cause negative emotions inside of you. And that's normal and there's nothing wrong with that and you're entitled to feeling that way. But you have to decide do I let what hurt me dictate how I'm going to act? Am I going to live motivated by my pain? Or am I going to live motivated by God? We have to decide how we're going to act. We don't have to decide how we're going to feel because we have a hard time controlling that anyway. But we can decide how we are going to act. Somebody says something that hurts me or annoys me or frustrates me. I can answer back in anger. I can retaliate. I can say hurtful things to them, but is that what I should do? This is where self-control takes effect. So after Abraham Lincoln had been assassinated, they were cleaning out his office and inside the desk and they found a letter that he wrote. This is a letter that he wrote where he voiced his disagreement towards another member of the government. He was very, very angry and very upset when he wrote the letter. And everybody was like surprised when they found this letter because he publicly never brought up these disagreements to anybody because he had self-control. And before he spoke out of turn and in anger, he decided to write the letter, decided to leave it in his desk, and he decided to wait before he sent it. You are going to have things that genuinely hurt you and you have a reason to be upset. I'm not trying to say you don't, but you have to decide what you're going to do and how you're going to act. You are not always going to have the feeling of wanting to do the right thing. You're not always going to desire to read your Bible. You're not going to desire to pray all the time. Sometimes you're not going to want to come to church. I'm your youth pastor and I have a confession to make. I don't always want to read my Bible. I don't always want to pray and I don't even always want to come to church, but I don't, <laughs> I don't make my decisions based off of how I feel. I don't act based on my desire or my lack of desire. Sometimes you just have to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. You're not always going to feel it. It's good when you do. That's awesome. When you go to prayer and you're excited about prayer, that's a great feeling, but it's not always like that. That's why you have to have some self-discipline. You will sometimes desire to do the wrong things. 
you're going to want to say something hurtful to somebody who hurts you. It doesn't even have to stop at words. There's so many wrong things that we want to do. It might be smoking, it might be drinking, it might be stealing, watching things on the internet, on TV that you should not be watching. We have so many things that are pulling at us that we have a desire to do that we know are wrong. Again, that's why we have to have some self-discipline and some self-control. So right now, I'm gonna give you three more points and these are gonna help you to develop more self-discipline and self-control in your life. Number one, have daily rituals. There ought to be things in your life that you do every single day. I don't want you to have 20 of them, but I want you to have four or five things that you just absolutely do every single day. I think it would be good if you prayed every day. If you read your Bible every day, you told your parents that you loved them every single day. If you did some exercises for 10 or 15 minutes, you decided that you were gonna read books for half hour every day. There's a whole bunch of things that you can add to your daily ritual list that will make you a better person, that will build you up, that will help you to grow spiritually. Figure out some things that you can do, write it down and say, okay, here are the four, five, six things tops that I am committed to doing every single day. Whether I like it or not, whether I want to or not, it doesn't matter, I'm gonna do these things. I'm not gonna wait for the desire to do this. I'm just gonna do it. A lot of my teenagers say that they don't have time to read the Bible, they don't have time to pray. And I think sometimes that's an excuse. Every single one of you have five minutes. It takes about two and a half minutes on average to read one chapter of the Bible. You read the Bible, one chapter, for two and a half minutes, and then you decided to pray for three things for two and a half minutes. In five minutes, you could have read your Bible and prayed and checked off two things on your daily ritual list. We have to stop making excuses, and we have to decide and commit that there are certain things we are going to get done every single day. Make a daily ritual list. These are the things that I get done every day because they're important. Sometimes you're gonna have to remind yourself of why. Why am I doing this? And then you're just gonna have to tell yourself, I'm doing this because I love God, because I wanna be a better person, because I want God to bless me. We'll talk about motivation another time. That's a whole different lesson, but I want you to have some daily rituals that you're gonna put on your list and you're gonna live by. Number two, practice saying no. I want you to find things in your life that you enjoy doing. Find your favorite hobby. Maybe it's playing video games. I love playing video games. Maybe it's watching movies. Maybe it's TV. Maybe it's social media. Find something that you absolutely love doing. And then tell yourself you're not gonna do it for five days. <laughs> That's gonna be rough, right? <laughs> The idea is you practice saying no to smaller things so that way you can learn how to say no to bigger things. You have to have some impulse control. That's actually what self-control is defined as in Webster's Dictionary. It's defined as delaying gratification or delaying reaction to impulses, meaning that I want something right now, but I can tell myself, no, I don't need it right now. So I want you to practice that. I want you to willingly decide that you're gonna take a break from something that's not sinful, it's not necessarily bad or evil, it's not even necessarily ruining your life or become overwhelming or even an addiction. I'm not talking about you're addicted to video games, but I want you to say, okay, I'm gonna take a break and I'm not gonna play video games for the next five days. Or if it's social media, or if it's watching TV, whatever it is, find an area where you can say no. Maybe it's skipping out on some of your favorite things you like to eat. Maybe no pop, no candy. And not just because, oh, that's good for your diet, but because you're trying to exercise self-discipline. Learn how to say no to yourself. Maybe you're at the store and you got some money and you're like, oh, I wanna buy all this stuff. I don't need it. Okay, so why don't you take that money and put a little bit into savings and decide not to waste it on some frivolous things. You have to learn how to say no. Say no. Now, in small things, is going to help you to build that muscle so that way you can say no to larger temptations in life later. The devil is always going to be tempting you with things. He's going to be tempting you in your morality, in your sexual life, in your financial life. He is going to be tempting you any way that he can. And you're going to have to say no to him. You're going to have to say no to a lot of things in life. So as a teenager, learn how to say no to yourself, by yourself, and then thirdly, 
Start coming up with your own rules and your own principles to live by. We have to live based off of rules. Now there's some rules in the Bible. There's the Ten Commandments. Jesus teaches a new law that we're supposed to love each other. And those are all good rules and we should live by those things. What I want you to do is when you come to church and you hear preaching or you're studying your Bible, or maybe you're listening to a sermon on YouTube or something like that, and something hits you and you go, huh, I need to live like that. Try to figure out how you're going to write that out as a rule for your life, as a principle that you live your life by. It's called self-control. I'm not supposed to come up with all the rules for your life. You're supposed to come up with some of those rules. Those rules should be based on what you learn from the Word of God and what you learn from wise people in your life. But you need to start developing some principles in your life that are going to guide and direct you and help you to do the right thing. I was talking to a couple teenage boys and we we're talking about dating. And I was telling them the importance of deciding now that you're going to be pure and moral. I said, if you don't decide that before you start dating, it's going to be hard to make those right decisions when you're faced with temptation. Daniel purposed in his heart that he was going to do the right thing when he was in captivity in a heathen nation. He had made that decision ahead of time. And so when he had to face his temptations, he knew what the right thing to do was. You're going to have to make some decisions about how you date and how you speak to people, and how you talk, and how you carry yourself, whether or not you work on Sundays, about tithing, giving 10% of your income to the Lord. You have to decide if you're going to live by those rules or not. I want you to start thinking about what principles, what rules do I have for my own life. So I hope this helps you. I hope you sincerely have a desire where you say, you know what, I am going to start developing self-discipline and self-control in my life. God bless you. We love you. Have a great night.